Yo. Tried this video like three times and my computer is being a fucking shit ass. So, uh, hopefully the shit assery will cease. Hi there. Oh, I'm like three years late to this conversation, but I thought I'd still cool. make a video on the topic regardless. Firstly, mm. what is UBI? Universal basic income is the idea that, basically, the government would send you a check each month with the idea that it would cover some base expenses that you may have. Now, the supposed benefits range from something as benign as more free time to curing erectile dysfunction. Um, I don't know who the fuck is uh, saying UBI will solve erectile dysfunction. Dysfunction. But uh, that's a little silly. Um... The whole free time thing, not necessarily the claim. The claim is that people's time will be worth more to them. Uh, it'll give people more economic power to make choices that they wouldn't um, be able to. Otherwise, it allows people to take more chances with finding more uh, suitable jobs, more economically uh, viable jobs for their uh situation and blah 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 so it's not like more free time it's like that their time is worth more so there are several models of all of this could work so let's take a look at why this generally isn't the best idea from a marxist perspective this is fundamentally a discussion of reformism and um from a marxist perspective is a weird thing to throw in there because uh oh okay um, he doesn't clarify if he means as a Marxist talking about the society we're in or talking about in a hypothetical Marxist society, which he later on kind of goes back and forth between. But Instead of the far more attractive option, nudge nudge, you can take a look at my Problems of the Western Left video for a deeper conversation in that area. Don't fucking nudge me. I don't like to be touched. With that said, let's get started. The problems. First of all, the presuppositions. The idea is that, with UBI, economic activity would be stimulated as people would spend more, would have base needs met so that they can pursue more gainful employment, would be able to start their own businesses and further grow the economy, ushering in higher living standards for all. Of course, this completely looks past the usual infinite growth on a finite planet issue, but we can ignore that for now. Uh, he doesn't really ever come back to that. Um, and he does that a couple times in this video, which is really aggravating. He'll be like, not if you think about that, but we won't, we'll talk about that later. But then he never comes back to it. Um, he dismisses a lot of things by saying, like, well, that's just stupid if you think about it this way. But then doesn't clarify what he means by that or expand in a way to be like letting us also think that way even hypothetically for the conversation um he's basically just throwing out like weird things that may or may not be dismissive um or may or may not uh destroy the point being presented um but then he doesn't clarify it so it's hard to be like eh, i have to go and do a bunch of other research now and i'm not against research it's just like part of the point of you making a video and in uh inciting the conversation or having the conversation is that you would explain those things um i guess off the assumption that i either don't already know it or don't understand it or that it's just something that i'm unaware of because I still don't think that's, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, okay, um, what he said was on like a, like a, a climate, uh, thing. I don't think he meant climate as in terms of like climate change, because I don't think UBI or any economic policy is really that tied into that point. I think he meant like an economic climate. I could be misunderstanding that, but either way, he doesn't explain upon it, so it's like, uh, I'll re I'd rebuttal to that, but you kind of just, like, threw out a vague point, 
and didn't clarify it. The more insidious quote-unquote benefit would be to replace supposedly bulky bureaucratic social programs with UBI, which kind of reveals why. Um, in America, we do have... Okay, I advocate for socialist programs, the use of socialism where it is beneficial, and as long as it um, gives a unobtainable freedom otherwise to the people who are, uh, you know, affected by it or whatever. Um, I'm for socialism, but that doesn't mean every socialist policy is good. That doesn't mean anything, every social policy that we have or social program that we have is perfect and shouldn't be altered in any way. Um, a decent example is Okay, so like food stamps is a decent example. I'd rather have food stamps in place than nothing in place, of course. But food stamps itself is a bit of a messy solution. A bit not as productive as it should be. Um, it is its own separate kind of currency in a way that ends up just kind of being traded if other currencies are needed um, for other problems other than like food. Um, instead of giving the stores actual currency, they're given, I guess, like a even more pseudo currency. Um, and it doesn't really bring money into the neighborhood or area where it is, uh, implied. So like, you know, social, um, food stamps, 100%, I would like it over nothing, but the, there are most, most certainly better solutions to those kinds of problems um and advocating that we should clean up some of the socialist programs we have in america because we have a very messy way of doing it in america um it's not as universal universally on the national level as i would like um it's a bit more like state defined and then states don't all universally have the same kind so like it just gets messy from state to state um and yeah so like it is a bit clunky in america right now and to point that out isn't saying you're anti-socialism in any way actually you can be 100 percent for socialism and still point out that we could clean up what we have in america in terms of socialist programs um i would like to see more universal things across the board in America on a national level that we can all discuss on a more uh, unifiably known way. Um, obviously, certain states have different standards of living based on the, uh, like the cost of living. Um, the areas in which they are have different problems, like whether they're on the coast or in the middle of the country have drastically different needs and blah 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 that can be addressed on a state level but yeah why a whole lot of billionaires are on board with the idea in fact this is the only major and he does this a lot too he brings up billionaires a couple billionaires have uh been for ubi and then twists it as if billionaires are going to put it in place, then take it away once they have us in a corner. And it's like, obviously, if we vote it in, we're going to, you know, continue to vote to keep it in. Um, so that's a weird point to make. Um, reason I can see common across that group. Here, I read these. The, the thing is... The version of UBI I support and the version of UBI Bill Gates or Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg support are probably different. They probably all support a you know, slightly different version of UBI from each other. And even in these quotes, they're not as much like advocate. Well, uh, I think one of them was. But Elon Musk in particular wasn't even advocating UBI as much as saying like, yeah, we're probably going to need it due to automation um taking more and more jobs which is just a really 
true statement. You, uh, on automation is taking more jobs, and I don't think we should stifle technology just to keep people employed. Um, so yeah. Hint: those people aren't looking out for your interests. But again, demonizing billionaires, um, Marxists and socialist people, or people who are avid socialists. Um, they do this thing where they treat rich people talking about economics as if it's a racist talking about race issues, and it's really annoying because, like, just because people are rich does not mean they don't have the interest of non-rich people in mind as well. doesn't mean they can't vote in that interest. It doesn't mean that they're constantly conniving to screw you over um i know there's been like a big thing about hassan being a socialist and having a bunch of money um and yeah i'm in the camp of yeah make your money dude just because you have money or make money or have made money does not mean you're now evil or have no good interest for the people and it's just kind of a silly point to make it demonizing of people who have money for no reason it's not a good point it's just like hey these guys support it and we don't like them and that's their po that's his point is i don't like rich people and some rich people like this so i don't like it but we'll talk about that in a second Silly. a trial <coughs> version of what ubi could look like was for example the stimulus checks people got as a response to the code not really for a number of reasons um because the way people act economically in a pandemic where they're advised not to leave the house and how they economically act not in a pandemic when they can leave the house and do leave the house much more often is very different it's vastly different honestly um and then on top of that the stimulus checks weren't uh, as they weren't consistent, they weren't guaranteed each time, every time we got them, we were kind of like, this might be the last one, so I don't know, maybe they'll do it again, hopefully, and that also changes how people spend. Um, so like, it's again, not a great example, it's like a minor kinda example of how we could implement it it would that might be an example for on how it was afforded on a government level that's uh, a place where that example would be fruitful to bring up but in terms of like anything else it's really not COVID issue interestingly what happened with that money shines a small light on what a general ubi program could face some banks immediately jumped on the money people got um yeah this is a a thing that he brings up too one he's leaning on the banks are evil because capitalism haha -ha, um thing yeah banks do a lot of shitty things but not all banks not all bankers are just conniving horrible people trying to screw over the lower and working class um but yes banks do shitty things on a pretty consistent level or basis i mean um, with this example in particular, I do believe some states put in laws so that banks cannot take money or no one can take money that was given by the stimulus checks, which obviously is something I would have or want to be put into the UBI uh, bill when passed and any good, decent economist or understanding person of the bill would also probably put something along those lines in um especially if it's on a national level we do a lot to make sure little things like that don't come up and if they do come up obviously we can at any point revise things and add things to make that not a problem anymore legislation is pretty pretty fucking useful if used <clears throat> Claiming that since these individuals have this or that debt, this money should go directly into paying that. 
in terms of owed money or debt though it is a bit more of a gray area because are the people who are owed money not do they not have a right to the money that they're owed if not that sets a weird precedent for people to do anything and not have to pay for it um if we never have to like pay for things in the long run um so like yeah if money is owed it should be like paid um and there is a right to that but at the same time um again we can put things in place like certain states have to make sure that the money granted by UBI or at least an amount uh still livable to that person is untouched and i mean yeah like we've already had uh, a couple examples where we solved that in certain states and it wouldn't be that hard to implement nationally that off before anything else what's stopping a ubi system from basically being faced with the same issue in regards to rent debts mortgages or anything else um the only thing that it would even remotely apply to is debts um you have the conscious decision to pay your rent every month um the landlord cannot just go in your bank account bank account and take your money um so you like you still have your money and no in no way is there any legal precedent to allow landlords to go into your bank account without your permission and take your money you have to pay for that as a like as an equal consumer whatever What's stopping the UBI checks from hitting your account and then automatically transferring to pay off student debts? Said again, we can. Certain states have already put in a thing. Uh, debts are a bit more of a gray area. Student debts, especially. Um, but yeah, like we can put in a thing guaranteeing that a certain amount of the UBI or the entire UBI or a certain amount of your overall uh, money is untouched, so that you're not you know, left starving at the end of the day. I'm pretty sure um, there's some amount of laws in place for that already. And then again, certain states did that with the stimulus check. So uh, it's, you're bringing up a point that you kind of already know the solution to. That extortionate interest rates. What's stopping all loans from raising interest rates to specifically capture this new money? Furthermore, we need to remember that we live in a market system. Nothing is stopping landlords, manufacturers, and basically everyone else from increasing prices to meet the sudden... Okay, um, inflation is definitely a concern. It's a concern with or without UBI. Um, and I would love to see legislation put in place to kind of help with inflation no matter what. Um, because constantly trying to catch up with inflation in certain areas uh regard to other areas it's n it never just equally inflates and that's why it's a problem um yeah like certain things like uh putting in legislation to make sure that necessary goods don't go over a certain price um like uh services that are necessary are unable to go over a certain price um there are certain ways we can deal with inflation uh Inflation is more of a problem with UBI if we overdo UBI. Um, if we, like, give too much money, which, yeah, even people who support UBI don't support, like, insane amounts of money being given out. Uh, it's pretty much enough to cover basic necessities, and then anything further than that you would still have to work for. Influx of several hundred dollars in people's pockets. Rent is notoriously known for this, as landlords continuously try to increase it during the... Yeah, um, landlords were shitty about that. Again, legislation put some shit down, um, because, in theory, fucking, uh, landlords would also be getting UBI, so they shouldn't have to, uh, raise rent in any way. It really wouldn't serve any purpose, um, other than to make more money just because they know other people have more money. Uh, a, again, a downfall of capitalism that should be uh, worked through with 
legislation and socialist programs to catch those uh, on the downfall of them. This pandemic. And if it wasn't for the emergency COVID laws put in place, we'd be seeing rent jump up roughly the amount of whatever you'd end up getting in the bank. Again, if it wasn't for those laws that apparently we only acknowledge when suitable, I guess, it's like, okay, we already went over those laws are put into place and we can continue to use laws like that or those exact ones on a national scale bank from uncle sam each month there's already a drive for further austerity measures within the u.s real quick i want to point out kind of a meta point he's using a lot of weird republican terms and it's really uncomfortable coming from someone who said they're marxist it's all right like uh and practically everywhere else ubi as it's currently being proposed will just be another strategy towards that aim that's why everyone from Mises to Reagan was in favor of different flavors of UBI. Remember, um, yeah, I mean, I got, you're just bringing up people that you disagree with, saying they agreed with something, and that's your reason for disagreeing with it. Is like, uh, what's like the opposite of an appeal to authority? Remember, UBI scaled to cost a lot of money, even trillions by some estimates. If they'll be paid out, where does the budget of far more efficient programs like public health care go? Uh, okay. Well, public health care... All right. Well, here's the thing. Um, a lot of... I feel like we went over the... I already did this fucking video like three times, but my computer kept shitting out, so I'm forgetting what I already brought up and what I didn't. Um, yeah, some programs like food stamps would become redundant and not have to be paid for anymore if gotten rid of, thus making a lot more uh, currency available to fund UBI. Um, and uh, he's doing the Republican thing of like, well, if we pay this money, we'll have no money for anything else ever. And it's like, well, that's not true at all. Like... Yeah, it'll cost a lot of money. Um, he said, like, trillions or some shit. That's, like, the most insane estimate I've heard. Um, again, countries work in very, very large amounts of money, so it's not just that cut and dry of, like, oh, a lot of money. Like, yeah, that's a lot of money to me, but to a government, it's it's not. Um, things like health care and shit like that, obviously, we still want. And... Uh, in terms of like you like UBI might help alleviate parts of those needs and that would be awesome um but if there's still a need after UBI is implemented for more socialist programs we would most certainly try to find a way to make that work as well it's not an either or thing on that regard it's just if we have ubi a lot of things would be easier to manage and the things that aren't completely managed by ubi we would still try to manage otherwise if you're getting all this quote-unquote free money the argument goes why would you need again that's like such a republican talking free money it's like dude you're a marxist though like i don't know i think i thought you understood how like taxes re reallocation of taxes and all that shit worked being a marxist but need universal health care or food stamps why would we need to build a decent public transportation system if you can just hire an uber with that extra money well we need public transportation that's still a need um paying for just paying for more shit defeats the purpose if you know we're just paying for more shit like, uh, okay that's not how people are going to act still necessities are still going to be necessities um i mean yeah m more people probably would uh use uber which is good for uber drivers and makes more jobs that way um and not need as much of a public uh thing but like if it's still needed we'll still 
fight to get that done. It's just going to be a lot easier to achieve if it's not as uh, detrimental to people as is due to UBI. Why would you need unemployment benefits if you're already getting a check? To put it simply, UBI is a socialization of an expense that should be paid. Like, he brings up certain things that would become redundant, like uh, unemployment and uh, uh, fucking food stamps and shit. Like, yeah, those would become redundant and unneeded for obvious fucking reasons. And, like, it that's not bad. They're still getting the same benefits as they would with those just through UBI now, and not only that, other people are also getting benefits, but, um, yeah, like, things like healthcare, UBI doesn't completely solve healthcare, or any of the problem, uh, most of the problems in that, it might make it so people can afford it easier, it might help people, um, you know, be willing to go to the doctor more often, but, like, if, Healthcare is still an issue and shit like that. Like, it's not an either or. Paid through taxation of massive corporations and the wealthiest individuals. Instead, planned forms of this usually are little more than thinly veiled attempts at reducing taxes on the absolute wealthiest and their companies by shifting that. Um, if a wealthy person put forward a thing of UBI that was. <clears throat> yeah, I'm against that, obviously, but uh, most forms of UBI or presented. Uh, ideals of UBI would actually have rich people paying more in taxes. So that's a bit of a silly point. That tax burden onto the working class through increased VAT taxes and other sneaky methods. Alright, yeah. Any sneaky methods, uh, obviously no one's for that sneaky bullshit. And no, like, the taxes on the rich would probably go up due to UBI not make loopholes for them to get out of it that would defeat the purpose um ubi ideally should be given to the working class as well and not just a burden for them so again that's just so, a really weird point prices. it's like a really weird point that seems almost i don't know if it's disingenuous or just a misunderstanding of how ubi has been moder modernly presented. Cut social spending and reduce securities all for a lump sum at the end of the month that barely covers whatever is lost with all that austerity. And yeah, he brought up like Reagan uh, was down with like a certain version of it. Again, the version that Reagan was down with is probably very different than the version I am. Doesn't sound all that good to me, being fully honest. Furthermore, those who are vulnerable or who wouldn't be eligible for UBI, be they undocumented workers, prisoners, those with disabilities, or anyone else, would end up with the brunt of increased costs. Um, okay, the only people that wouldn't be eligible, ideally, are just people in a high enough wealth class to not need it at all, and would be redundant to give it to, or just non-citizens. Um, people in prisons, I don't believe they would really brunt the cost of that. Do people in prison pay taxes like that? I don't think so, right? Like, no. So that's just kind of silly. Um, yeah, like, the only people that wouldn't get UBI are non-citizens and people who don't need it. Slash social programs and no UBI, or a heavily reduced total income, to offset the change. That's all assuming this mo The heavily reduced total income is a bit of a silly point, because people aren't going to uh, work at jobs that they don't want to work at for an amount that isn't worth their time, because, again... We've been over this part, too. Like, UBI would give them the freedom to not have to work at that job that doesn't value their time. Money would grow with inflation year by year. Wages already don't, so what makes you think UBI would? Even if it would be pegged to inflation, you'd be naive to think this won't come along with the destruction of social programs as a de Okay. Um, yeah, peg it to inflation... That was a good point. But then you'd be naive not to think something irrelevant to that. Um, okay. 
yeah, that point is a little disingenuous. I'm not going to lie. Um, and his end points unrelated to the previous part. Um, yeah, again, certain things will not be paid for anymore because they are redundant to do so, uh, making more, more currency to be put into UBI. Um, ah, fuck, I'm trying to like unpuzzle the shit he just said there. Let's run it back a bit. Don't, so what makes you think UBI would? Even if it would be pegged to inflation, you'd be naive to think this won't come along with the destruction of social programs as a dedicated goal of the ruling class. Oh yeah, a bit of a conspiracy. Um, yeah, that's just conspiratorial nonsense, and any real uh, form of UBI being presented is not a ruling class conspiracy and he keeps relying on that pretty heavily um the ruling class would probably pay more in taxes due to ubi um the working class would benefit far more the fucking uh impoverished i don't know it's just we live in a capitalist society in which workers and capitalists stand in direct opposition in regards to their interests Workers want full, dignified employment because that gives them all the power to agitate for whatever they demand. Capitalists want a reserve army of labor, a mass of unemployed so that- Um, alright, so... Um... Kinda? But the point with UBI is that, like, that reserved amount isn't desperate for jobs. So they can't screw people over knowing that they can just easily replace them because those people that they would ideally just replace them with don't want to be screwed over either. So with UBI, yeah, there's like, he's saying like, oh, the employment will rise, but like the unemployed people will have more uh, ability to refuse jobs they don't want to work. So it's... uh, trying not to just call him disingenuous every time so that if workers get rowdy well they'll just be fired and on to the next guy it goes this keeps wages low profits high and workers desperate yeah again that's without ubi um with ubi the people aren't going to go into a job and eat shit uh because they have an option otherwise you know A UBI that is significant enough to live off of without working would be good for the working class as they'd be able to agitate for improvements through strikes. Here's another thing. Uh, I don't know if I said it in this video or one of the ones that got screwed up. Um, He keeps going between like UBI that is completely comprehensive to the point of never having to do anything economically ever again like a basically just the government's like here you go live and be happy and you never have to do anything and then he goes between that and ubi barely being enough to do anything and like he's not he's not really attacking one set idea of how ubi is presented modernly um he's not really going against like any bills that have been uh you know, suggested or anything like that. He's just going for like the general. Here's a problem that might occur with UBI. So then he conflates it to an inherent problem with UBI. Um, he, ah, fuck again. I don't remember which video I said this all in, but it, yeah, like he brings up the problems of underfunding it and overfunding it at the same time. Says they're both inherent, and then like treats them both as valid points against UBI, but the thing is no one is fucking uh, advocating for over or underfunding it. Um, Those problems can't both exist at the same time. The problems from overfunding something and the problems from underfunding something are going to be different and not all of them can happen simultaneously. Um, So like he brings up separate issues like contradictory issues and claims they're all inherent to ubi when they're not demonstrations etc without the fear of them going bankrupt if fired or otherwise 
Musk, Bezos, and every other guy in that clique knows this, and that definitely isn't the UBI they're advocating for. They want a UBI that is just a sprinkling, so that workers would begrudgingly accept cuts to their pay. No, no one would uh, accept any cuts to pay. Um, if you cut my pay, hey, cool, I'll just go find a job that didn't do that, and I can, you know, afford not being in this shithole for a little bit. Like, again, like, he brings up the issues that UBI is meant to solve, and then says, like, oh, this is a problem in capitalism without UBI. So it would... Like, he, he's all over the place on this shit. Like, obviously, the problems that are solved by UBI won't occur when UBI is in place. But he's using the problems that are in place without UBI as if they're a point against UBI. Um, because he, like, ignores certain parts of the outcome of what UBI would do to make the point fit. Their monthly UBI check wouldn't be enough to support them on strike or demonstrations, and they'd be forced to continue working under worse conditions. It's not actually an extra thousand dollars in your pocket. And again, like... Uh, he's, I guess, attacking, like, the billionaire's idea of U UBI, which, again, is not everyone's idea of UBI. Um... And then he's saying it's all a conspiracy. Uh, when people go on strike, it's like, uh, yeah, those those pay cuts aren't going to happen, though. They're just, like, kind of a, f a conspiracy and shit. And then on top of that, we can make legislation to make it so that that's not a problem either. It's like, I it's, don't know. It's $1,000 minus any benefits you already receive. A working class with significant unemployment has weak minus, bargaining power. Minus any redundant benefits. Any benefits that we don't need due to UBI. It's not all benefits. And then on top of that, I also don't think that uh, jobs should really be in charge of healthcare and shit like that to begin with. Um, so, uh. And a weak working class can easily be pushed around. UBI tends to be a way to shift discussion away from the acute structural changes that need to be made, let alone talks of improving wages, workplace safety standards, and increased democratic participation in the... Uh, again, it's like he's doing a very either-or-ish thing, and it's not. Like, no one suggesting UBI just says UBI is the solution to everything. Um, he's <clears throat> pretending that people are claiming certain things about UBI. I guess this is kind of falling into a straw man at this point. Um, I get, like, he's arguing really general, generalized versions of UBI and then arguing points of UBI that I don't think even the billionaires are suggesting, but on a conspiratorial level might be the case. And it's like, uh, if you get rid of all the conspiracies and billionaires and all that shit, like, as a point, it'd be really, it well, it'd be easier for me to have an, an actual conversation with you with, because, about, because, again, like, now I feel like I'm just breaking down conspiracies. In the workplace. Now, the solutions. UBI isn't a bad idea on its own, but it needs to be contextualized. With rent freezes and price controls, a working class powerful enough to demand and maintain universal health care, access to education, unemployment benefits, etc., UBI would be a pretty great idea. Okay, so all the things that people who advocate for UBI are also advocating for. So, yeah, UBI is cool. Like, you just said it. I'm fighting for pretty much all that shit, too along with UBI. It's just uh, as automation gets more and more uh, complex and takes more jobs, we kind of need to uh, hurry the ball on some shit here. But is the US working class capable of demanding, let alone achieving that much? Same goes for the working classes of many European countries, and that's not even mentioning those on the imperial periphery. UBI re- Um, that's a bit of a doomer point. Um. I mean, if we're capable of achieving UBI, yeah, probably. Really represents something bigger than just a check every month. 
In it, there's hope that working people won't be so tight on money after rent, that they could possibly afford a doctor visit, that they could afford to eat healthier or to have more leisure time. In essence, UBI represents the subconscious demands of a beaten working class. Um, uh, okay, that's a bit right out the manifesto, too. Um, I guess, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't put it that way. It's just, like, more of a issue that has arised from capitalism that, you know, we need to solve, and UBI is a way of solving that in a lot of ways. It's not a fucking perfect fix-all, um, but it almost certainly helps in, you know, every other economic struggle. Universal health care, rent control, accessible public transportation. Instead of agitating for things that would definitely improve the conditions of the working class without this quote-unquote free money, the ruling class tries to bamboozle you with a shitty band-aid onto an already broken system. UBI only makes sense in a system where the working class has already achieved those aims which would directly protect and improve their lives. Within a capitalist society, UBI is a decent idea only with an already existing welfare net, not as a replacement of it to the dismay of the Musk. Oh, again, he keeps bringing up to the dismay of the Musks and Bezos. Uh, okay, so again, like... UBI is not being suggested as a fix-all to everything. It's not being suggested to abolish every social program. Um, it's more of a push to try to have one uh, universal uh, program on a national level that we can deal with a bit more... Uh, what's the word? Whatever that we can all talk about together and deal with on that way. Um, like, he's admitting UBI is good if we also get all the other things that we want. Uh, kinda. I mean, it's still good even if we don't have universal health care. It's still good even if we aren't in a perfect society, even if we aren't completely socialist or whatever. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's still a good thing to have, and, like, the only thing he brings up as a negative point is that it might be used as a conspiracy to screw over the working class or some shit, even though UBI is supposed to help the working class and is r mostly, if not completely, written out to do so. Like, I don't know. It's just really, like, I think what's throwing me off is, like, a Marxist is basically saying a bunch of right-wing bullshit. And I'm not sure how to respond because, like, if a right-winger says this shit, I know why they think the fucking stupid things they do there. But when a Marxist says something like that, it's like, uh, like, you you're almost attacking, like, your own ideology a lot of times, mistakenly. Um, but then, like, uh, it's just really conspiratorial as far as, like, the reasons why UBI wouldn't work. Uh. It's Bezos is of the world. And if we lived in a society where the working class did wield that sort of power, one which we could force the top income brackets to pay their taxes and to fund UBI along with all the other social programs, why would we just stop at that? Why not take the whole thing over and have a system that would ensure the continuation of these progressive policies, rather than leave it to the whims of... Well, that... Alright, um, getting UBI in and a total governmental shift are not you don't need an entire like governmental shift to have UBI in place you don't need that as he's trying to claim um you don't need everything else in place first um but like he's saying you need that but then he's like well why not just stop that well, one that's not necessary to get UBI and then two that's way more fucking work and 
is of the capitalist class that will, the second they see a weakening of the labor movement, tear down all these concessions and revert us back to the system we had before, if not worse. Yeah, see, that's his conspiracy here. It's like, well, if we're voting in UBI, don't vote out UBI. It's... And yet, like, having money does give you a disproportionate amount of power in America, but that is also, like, a problem that we need to address as well. Um, But, like, then he uses that as... (sighs) Oh, it's fucking weird. It's fucking just a weird argument that doesn't really make sense. And I'm trying to, like, make it make sense so I can argue with it, but... Yeah, like, he's, most of his point is just demonization of rich people. And it's like, not all rich people are trying to screw you over just because you keep going to the three or four people who you disagree with doesn't mean, like, everyone in terms of UBI agrees with those three people. In fact, most people probably don't. And this is the crux of the matter. Prepare for me to sound like a broken record. Under capitalism, reformist means will, at the best, result in concessions given to the working class to offset and diffuse revolutionary momentum. Concessions can always be taken away. The only way, and I repeat, the only way we can maintain the gains of the working class are, as history has shown, through revolution. What kind of revolution? What kind? There are many different kinds. Are you talking in terms of technology, in terms of an economic one, in terms of overthrowing the government? Oh my god, people who invoke revolution just make me angry. Because it's like... Especially when it's like we're talking about one policy, and it's like, hey, what if we have this policy? No, what we need to do is an entire revolution. Cool, that sounds way fucking harder to do, though. Um, Like, are we picking up guns? I don't think you guys are for guns, but... (laughs) Like, uh, what kind of revolution? Because any non non-violent revolution you're gonna have to work with the system in place as is um yeah i want to see more socialism better fucking uh policies for the people and not just you know the people in government and the rich yeah of course but you know how do we do that other than just picking up arms kind of got to deal with the society we're in um so yeah like Ah, uh, just saying, like, revolution, it's pretty fucking vapid and pointless. Um, yeah, like, okay. This is something that really fucking annoys me. A lot of people do this. Right-wingers do it. Fucking leftists do it, too. Um... We'll be trying to talk about one policy and how to implement it in our government. Reasonable conversation. And instead of actual points of why that wouldn't economically work, um, actual points of it not benefiting people that it's being written to benefit, you point out one, like, people who you disagree with or villainize also disagree with this, so it must not be good. And then, like, instead of just talking about the actual issue or uh, fucking topic at hand, we run away to, like, well, what we need to do is just build a perfect world where that wouldn't be necessary. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm on board with building the utopia, the perfect world, and all that shit. Problem is, uh, that doesn't exist. (laughs) Like, at all. There's no such thing as a perfect world. Um, there's no perfect government. And we should, I mean, we should thrive for it, but, yeah. And 
there's to have a revolution there's so many fucking other issues now that we have to fucking solve to get to that point when we're just trying to talk about UBI and yeah like a whole fucking perfect utopia revamp would be awesome but the problem is how do you get there and yeah like how do you get there we're not picking up guns so what do we do oh we vote cool so we vote on policies do i have to break down how government works on that level I really don't want to. I don't want to just be a fucking government class. I want to actually talk about the conversation. Uh, I don't know. This is just kind of exhausting. Through the seizing of political power and the means of production by the working class. You'll never get universal health care that won't slowly be stripped at the edges bit by bit, just like in the most shining of the European social democracies. You'll never get equal opportunities as education will inevitably be barred to you through price or nepotistic allocation, just as we see happen within the richest country on earth, the United States. You'll never get guaranteed employment under capitalism. Instead, you'll get 39-hour contracts, gig economy nonsense, and other bull... Uh, again, like... He's bringing up problems that UBI, UBI would help with. Uh, like, this problem would not be as much of a problem with UBI. And UBI would... Like, okay, at this point, I don't know if, like, I'm just repeating myself in this video or repeating myself from the videos that got, like, fucked up. Uh, it's just, like, this shit, we already kind of worked out earlier, but... Bullshit jobs that add little to nothing to your life. Instead, we can have a system in which we have full employment, in which everyone works five or six hours a day instead of eight, in which social surplus goes into funding universal health care and education, in which the elderly and disabled can be cared for in a dignified manner, all in a form that is guaranteed to stay. Yeah, but why is that guaranteed to stay? Why can't that be out voted out by Republicans or people against it, too? Like, it can be. Um... Again, like, what we need to do is have a revolution, and then what will happen then is, like, no revolution can ever happen again, or won't need to... Be. It's like, that's not how that works at all. Like, things are still going to be need to change after the revolution. Uh, even if we overthrow the government, you know, not everyone completely agrees with how you want the government ran, and then you have to, you know make a bunch of concessions and compromises to build another government that's probably going to look pretty pretty uh much like every other government we have already uh maybe with a couple more good things uh probably with some bad things too still and a lot of people are going to get hurt in the pro is like oh my god i don't know even if there is more work to do It'll go towards positive ends that directly benefit you and your community, rather than enriching a handful of people already unfathomably wealthy. Without... So... No toilet's gonna be scrubbed, everyone just gets a perfect job in your world, everyone's perfectly happy. Again, it, this is silly. Now he's just daydreaming, um... That's not how society works. People still need to make burgers and scrub toilets and all that shit. Uh, automation hopefully will deal with that. Um, and yet, like, other than that, UBI helps with... Like, he's bringing up these other things like healthcare and all that shit that are, like, yeah, definitely helpful, but how does that help with the problems that UBI is supposed to help with. With automation taking jobs and making jobs harder to, you know, sustain. Making fulfillable jobs uh, actually harder to come about making it so that you have less economic freedom. Like, what, what about the things that you brought up instead of UBI actually help with UBI? Like, uh, it's just... 
Uh, it's silly. It's just really silly, honestly. Political power, the working class has nothing. We end up being little more than pawns at the hands of employers, to be moved around and cast out whenever it suits profits best. All in a world being dev- That's why we give the worker more money without having them have to work for it so that they can make those decisions. You know. It's just like... You're against UBI because without UBI, things are bad. And it's like, okay. That's why we're putting UBI in. It's like all the solutions that UBI would come or bring, um, he's like completely ignoring. I don't know. Devoured by climate change and talks of water wars and climate refugees already becoming more and more frequent. Systematic change is... Yeah, dude... UBI and none of those things are going to help with some of those, like, the things that you brought up, though. Like, it's just, most of this video is not even remotely about UBI. It's basically saying, like, I heard a couple billionaires like it, and I don't like billionaires, so let's have a revolution instead. Which is just silly. Like, it's just not adult politics anymore. Like, that's not how we talk about things. It's, yeah, I sat around wishing a utopia existed for years, but that's not how we get, like, we can't, oh my god, like, what kind of revolution are you trying to invoke? How do we go about it? And what, what actual things in place are going to help with the problems we have and I don't know is required and that systematic change sadly won't come when the best we can hope and agitate for is a few hundred dollars a month as everything that maintains and secures our lives around us is stripped bare uh, not everything around us would be stripped bare like again no one in UBI is advocating for any of that like it's just weird fear the LDR Read Lenin, as always. And while you're at it, why not Luxembourg's Reform Revolution, too? Sorry for ending on a more grim note than you... Okay, yeah. Um... Yeah, like... Uh, I, I got pretty burnt out towards the end of this. Um, because it just became redundant. Like, he's not really talking about anything UBI would be applied to. And, like, everything he brings up as a problem with UBI is just either ignoring that UBI would solve that or it's just demonization of rich people as if that is a point against UBI. Um, or it's just like conspiratorial, what if they do this and then they sneak in some shit? It's like, well, they can sneak in some shit on anything, like even on socialist shit. I don't know if you know this, but some governments pretend to be socialist, but they're really totalitarian or authoritarian, too. Um, so you can have any form of government and sneak in shitty things. We try to not allow that. We're not for the sneaky shit. I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you respond to a conspiracy like that? Anyway, um... Feel free to argue with me. I'll probably be able to have like a better conversation with people in the comment section. Um, that way we can like actually break down ideas. A lot of this is he'll like vaguely imply something is a point or a counterpoint to something, but then not really explain it all the way through. And then you're just like, all right, well. Like, you you said that's what I have to respond to now, but you're not giving me much to respond to. Uh, it's just... Yeah, not, not great. Not great, buddy.